So firstly, you need to open up Maya and we can see here that we've got Maya open. Um, the next step is to put it in both the perspective view and the editor view. So if you come into panels here, go to your save layouts and then go down to the perspective UV texture editor. We can see now that we've got the uh, perspective view on the left and the texture editor on the right hand side. Next step is to create some geometry. So if we just create a simple plane. So here we've just got a plane that I've created. Move it up, we can view it as well. We've shaded it in. Again, I always like to have my uh, wireframe on as well. So we can see that it's created. Um, you'll also see that it produces its, or, its own uh, automated map. But again, we want to create our own maps. Um, but before we do that, we should probably turn the shade mode on. So if you come into image and go down to shade UVs, at least now we can see the UVs correctly within our um, area over here. So the next step is to actually create our own UV maps. So if we go back into our perspective mode here, because this is a plane, you're seeing here that we're probably going to want to view it from the the top down. So this is the Y direction. So I tend to view it straight down from the Y if I was to do a plane and you'll see why in a moment. But if we come up to edit UVs and we delete the UVs, you can see that all of the UVs have been deleted from the system. Um, what we need to do now is we need to select our face that we want to apply our UV map to. And we've got that selected here. We then go through a process of going to create UVs. Because we're doing a plane here, the best method would be a planar map, but make sure that you go and you select the option that you want to uh, project onto. So in this case, we say from a, an original setting, which you might have, if we go to reset the settings, now what we want to do is we want to project it to the biggest face on our um, system here. Now we know that the face that we want to project it to is the Y. So we can see here that we're projecting straight into Y. So we want to project from our Y axis. We also want to keep the image width and height ratios as well. And now we go and project. So now we've got a new projection in the UV texture editor. Now we can move that around. As I say, I like to usually um, put my UVs outside of the space and work on them there. Um, if your UV is not selected, so say for instance, you don't have your UV selected here, if you come up to the um, Move UV Shell tool, um, that would allow you then to move your UVs around the map. Note that in the UV Texture Editor that these are now called shells. So the next step that we want to do is make sure that our orientation is correct. So in order to make sure our orientation is correct, we can come over here and say, click on our top edge. And you can see here that this edge and this edge are both aligned correctly. If they weren't, we could come up and select our UV, press E for rotation, and we could rotate our UV map around to get it into the correct orientation. In this case, it was fine to begin with, so we can keep that uh, shell exactly the same. So the next step that we want to go through is we want to then um, place our, our corrected UV back into its available location. So again, we want to make sure it's within the spaces so we can zoom in and make sure. So this one's probably a little bit big now that I've moved it. So let's just scale it. So I'm scaling just with R and then I'm moving just with W. So we've got our UV map nicely sat within our UV um, component here. Now we want to go through and create a UV snapshot. So to do that, we come up to polygons. We go down to UV snapshot. And you can see here that this is the default project file that you would have uh, set your project to in the beginning. So just make sure you select where you want something to go. In this case, I'm going to put it onto the desktop um, and I'm going to name the file uh, plain UV. So we can see it there. I'll save it as a PNG because I want it to be transparent. 
Um, and I'm just going to leave it at a 512 by 512. Please note that you want to keep your aspect ratio and you want to make sure that you don't have anti-aliasing lines selected. Otherwise, you're going to get lines across your plane. And then press OK. Now, you'll see that our UV map has been created here. So now what we want to do is that we want to open up Photoshop. So we can see Photoshop is loaded. We now want to load in our UV map. So we'll just bring our UV map in. Now you can see here that you can't see the UV map. So I like to create a background. So I tend to just name my layer. So I'll just call this the UV. And then I create a new layer, which I'll name background. And then I'm just going to paint a background layer here. So go to the paint bucket, make sure it's black and paint my background. Then just re-layer and have your UV map on top of your background map. So that's great. Now we need to create another layer and this layer is going to be our texture. Now I'm going to put a logo onto my texture. So I'm going to go file, import, um, why should I just grab a, I'll grab a file. So if we go to the desktop, if we go to the subject code and this week, let's grab the UV logo here, which was the Bond University logo. Actually, no, the, the logo up here. Oh. And put that inside of the frame. Now you'll notice here that it becomes a smart object. So we just want to press enter. Now, we can't actually do anything with this object at this point in time. So we need to come up and go to layer, rasterize and smart object. So now it's an editable object. We can do things with this particular object. So let's just come up to the magic wand. Let's select all of our uh, white space here and delete it. And now we're left with our Bond University logo. So now we just want to make sure that our logo is obviously within our space. So we might need to just scale it slightly. Remember we want to make sure it's within our UV boundaries. You can see that's just within the UV boundaries. Remember, we can paint to the edges here. And then we want to say, okay, that's great. We've got our UV. Then if we turn off the UVs and if we turn off the background, this is going to be the, the object that we're going to see inside of Maya. So now we can go and save this file, save as. We put it on the desktop. We'll save it as a PNG file. And I'm going to call this plain texture. And then I always like to put the value of the map. In this case, it was a 512 map. So we've got a plain texture for the 512 and we can save that. So now if we go back into Maya, we can now add a new material to this plane. So if we come in and we create a, um, a new material, we'll just make a standard Lambert. And now on the color uh, map here, we can select the color channel. We want to put a 2D file, so a texture file. We then want to select our new uh, texture, which we've got here. Now notice that we don't see it here, so we need to activate the textured mode. And then we need to assign it. And we made it that Lambert 2.
again, you can see sometimes you just need to click out and make sure that you activate the things correctly. And we can see now that we've got our Bond University logo. We can obviously move around. We can grab our logo and place it into the scene in the direction that we want it to look. We can turn off our, our wireframes and then we can say render render the view and there we've got our, our Bond University logo. So that's how you go about UV mapping a plane.